In the previous lesson, I created a simple room class to define the locations in a game, but the fields, those are the variables wrapped up inside room objects, well, they were public, so potentially programmers could get at them and change their values without any way for my code to check that the changes they make are correct and won't cause problems. I'm Hugh, and this is another lesson in my complete course in adventure game programming. Now, instead of making fields public, it's much better programming practice to keep an object's fields private and provide public accessor methods. Then, if programmers want to change the values of an object's fields, they have to call the public methods. Let me consider how I can do this both in Java and in C Sharp. I'll start with Java. In Java, it's quite normal to write a pair of functions or methods with the same name as the field they access, but preceded by get or set. So with a variable called description, I would have this pair of accessor methods. Here you can see get description and set description. Get description returns the current values of the description field, and set description assigns a new value to it. These two methods now provide the only way for another programmer to get at the private data inside an object. That means I'm able to write code to, well, to process the values of the variables before returning them from a get accessor method, or say to capitalize a string maybe, if that's what I wanted to do. And with a set accessor method, I can verify or modify the values of any arguments that were passed to the method before assigning those values to the internal fields of the object. For example, my get description method here, that returns the value of description, that's the description variable, appended to the string this is. Meanwhile, the name variable has a get name method to return its value, but it has no set name method to assign a new value, and that means that name is now read-only. I can get its value or read it, but I can't set its value or write it. I've also added arguments to the constructor so that all the object's fields are assigned values when a new room object is created. Of course, when I call the constructor to create a new room object, I must be sure to pass all the arguments that it expects. Now let's turn to C-sharp. In C-sharp, well, I could write exactly the sort of get and set methods that, well, that I just wrote in Java. It's more common to use properties. A property is, in effect, a pair of methods to get and set data. But the getter and setter both use the same property name. That name can be used just as though it were a variable. So here, for example, the description property is used both to get and set the value of the underscore description field. And when I access it in code, I use a syntax like this. Here, the syntax for getting name and description is not like the syntax for calling a function with a pair of parentheses after the function name. It's more like the syntax for accessing a public field. If I want to make a property read-only, I omit the set accessor in the property definition. There are also other ways in which properties can be written in C Sharp, and if you're interested in that, you can find information on the Microsoft documentation site. But for now, these simple properties will be fine for my room objects. Incidentally, you can simplify property creation by using refactoring tools. In NetBeans, I right-click and select Refactor, then encapsulate fields. Now I can select one or more fields and decide whether I want both get and set accessors. Or if I want to disable the set accessor, for example, to make fields read-only, I can do that as well. And then I click refactor and it generates some get and set methods. In C Sharp, in Visual Studio, I right-click a private variable and set quick actions and refactoring. Then, encapsulate field, and it generates a property. OK, so now that we have a basic room class, let's think about how we might create a whole network of adjoining rooms. In other words, it's time to create a map. 
Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the Code with Hugh channel and click the bell to get an email whenever I upload new lessons.